Hello, this video is about Acronis TrueImage 2013. In a few moments, TrueImage will be loaded from a bootable CD and used for two steps. The first step will be to create an image of this PC's Windows 7 hard drive, drive C, and save the image on an external USB drive. The second step will be to restore the image from the backup drive back onto drive C. I'll plug in the USB drive. So we can see in the left hand column that there are just two drives. Drive C, which is the Windows drive, and drive D, which is the backup drive that we've just installed. I've already created a folder on the backup drive and called it Acronis Images. How exciting is that? And of course it's empty at the moment. I'll close Explorer and before booting into Acronis I'll just run CCleaner. This will get rid of all the temporary files making the Windows drive as small as possible. Thank you CCleaner, cheerio. Time to power down. Pressing power to switch the computer on and hitting the keyboard delete key to go into the BIOS. where down in the bottom right hand corner I'll click on boot menu and then choose the DVD drive which is a Plex store In the right hand side I'll choose True Image Loading from CD is a slow old process but I'll just leave it running so that you know what it's like in the real world What would you like to do? I'll click on Backup My Discs and it's selected Disc 2 which is a Windows 7 Professional 64-bit Drive C and that's the correct drive so I'll click on Next in the bottom right hand corner and now it wants to know where to put the, the backup the new archive so in the right hand side I click on Browse and in the left hand column I'll choose the 500 gig drive click on the triangle to the left to expand the drive and then click on Acronis Images which is an empty folder at the moment coming down the way to the file name I'll just call it today's date 2018 February 14th and click on OK in the bottom right hand corner
In the left hand side there's some optional steps. The first item, backup method. I'll choose a full archive. And then second item down, what to exclude. I'll put a tick in exclude files matching the following criteria so that it doesn't copy temporary files and it doesn't copy other TIB files which are the Acronis files. Next option down, backup options. I'll leave each of these at its default setting except for the last one, archive validation where I'll put a tick in validate because what's the point in creating an archive if you've not validated it to make sure that it's okay and then comments purely for YouTube demo bottom right hand corner I'll click on proceed just make a note of the time 1048 because although Acronis is brilliant at making images and restoring from them it's not very good when it comes to calculating the time that the operation takes it's suggested that it will take nine minutes. I think it will be a bit longer than that. And when we look at the file name, it's put a suffix on a full underbar B1, underbar S1, underbar V1. I don't know what those parameters mean, although I assume that full means that it's a full backup. and V1 might mean that we're doing a validation. To conserve the camera's battery, I'll click on pause, well, I'll press pause on it, and then restart in a few minutes. The software finished creating the archive and started the validation at three minutes past 11. As you can see here, it's not very good at projecting and predicting the, the remaining time. That's why I use the phone. So that's the end of step one. I'll click OK. And if I close this down, it'll reboot the machine. So now it can reload and we'll run step two, which is to do a restore. And this is what we'd do sometime in the future. If Drive C became corrupt, perhaps through a virus, or if the drive actually failed, we had to replace it.
So this time we'll choose recover my disks. We have to browse to find the archive. In the left hand column we'll expand the backup drive. Click on Acronis Images and select the one that we've just created. OK. Select it again on this screen and click Next and choose Recover the Whole Disks, which is the default option. Click on Next and we just want to recover Drive C. Click on Next. And it's selected Drive C as the target. Click on Next. It gives us a, a quick rundown of what it's about to do. Two operations, delete the existing partition and then recover it from the backup. I'm happy with that, so we click on Proceed in the bottom right hand corner. It suggested 8 minutes as the recovery time. Again to conserve battery power, I'll turn the camera off for a short while. OK, so that's the end of step two. It's restored OK, so I'll click OK on this. I'm going to close it down, it'll reboot. And I've removed the CD, so it'll boot into Windows. To recap, creating the image took just 15 minutes, and the same time was used to validate it. It was also 15 minutes to do the restore. The input drive, drive C, is just 72 gig out of a possible 120. Small by today's standards, but that's because there's no data on it. My data is all, always stored on a different drive, which has been disconnected for this video, just to keep things as simple as possible. The drive contains just Windows 7, Office, a full version, Photoshop, Dreamweaver, various video editing programs, plus lots of different utilities. So quite small. The image itself was less than half that space at round about 35 gig. If your mouse or keyboard or both of them lock up when you've just booted from an Acronis True Image CD, then you've al almost certainly fallen foul of a well known and well documented True Image problem. You've got two solutions. The first, which is highly technical and time-consuming, is to produce a specialised bootable CD. Unless you're a really good techie, I wouldn't even go down that route. The second option is to use a simple kind of keyboard and mouse. For example, one with this type of connector, the old-fashioned PS2. Another, which is my preferred option, is to go for something like this, a Logitech MK270 wireless keyboard and mouse. These are available widely online for round about the £20 mark. I even saw one yesterday in Tesco's for just under 20 quid. I think it was 1999 or 1995, something of that order. 
it uses an old-fashioned nano USB dongle as opposed to the more modern type which Logitech calls a USB unifying receiver as signified by the orange logo these are all well and good in general because you can pair up to six devices with this one receiver great for normal use but not for what we want we need one with a simple type of USB dongle other devices might work you'll just have to experiment thanks for watching cheerio